better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to an episode of Venom Vlog. And it is raining outside like crazy. Uh, power actually went off a little bit earlier. So I think I'm only going to record two episodes tonight. I was going to do three, but now I'm worried as the rain is coming back and the thunder and everything, I'm worried about power going out. So I'll save my review. I'm going to do Carnage, uh, the Spider-Man 2099 book, Dark Genesis. I'm going to do all this in one episode. I read all five issues. They're all fresh in my mind, but I'll probably record that review another night. I took some notes just to help me out in case I need it. Um, cause tonight I just want to talk about Venom Lethal Protector 2, issue 4, and I want to talk about some spoilers from issue 3 that we didn't get into, because I was trying to keep that a spoiler-free episode, but this one I'm not. Uh, you know, this one I'm excited to talk about, because I feel like this is, harkens back to one of my favorite Doctor Doom stories, and, uh, and, and we're going to get into that, because they do a really good job. David Michelini does a great job with Doom in this, and Fareed Karami's artwork is so good. I really, really love his style. And I love what they're doing in this storyline. So we the book starts at the end where you have Venom kind of fighting all these guards that work for Dr. Doom. And he's like, Doom, you betrayed us. You, you know, you betrayed us. And then it's like, how did we get here? And it flashes back to the end of the last issue when Dr. Doom showed up. Eddie is now no longer working for Silver Sable and he's out on his own. Pedro is safe. And he's like, OK, I think I've done my good deed. I'm good. And then Dr. Doom rolls up. And, you know, comes out of the, the limo he's in and he's like, hey, I have this crystal that was part of the big, you know, crystal from the third issue that exploded and wiped out that whole base with the killer nuns and everything and Vanguard. So, he, you know, you find out that Doom had a secret agent working for them and they were able to find a, a slither of that crystal and Doom has it. And he's like, we're going to use this crystal and we're going to use your symbiote and I have a plan to lead to immortality and also to get me something. So you will get immortality, Eddie. And I will get something that I want. And Eddie's like, okay, well, what is that? You know, how do you think we could get immortality? And that's when Doom is like, let me explain. He goes, my mother was this amazing sorceress. And unfortunately, when she died, she went to hell. And every year at this around this time, I try to go to hell to retrieve her. But I'm always stopped by a demon, you know, like Mephisto or something like that. And I love that because there's literally one of my favorite stories of Dr. Doom where him and Dr. Strange, he goes to Dr. Strange and like, you're going to take me to hell and you're going to help me retrieve my mother's soul. And uh, and Dr. Strange like, okay. And they go on this mission to, to do that. And it's really good. It's one of my favorite comic books uh, featuring Dr. Doom. And it just showed me how badass Dr. Doom is. So in this one, you know, he hasn't done that yet. He hasn't gone down there and had a successful trip to hell to, to retrieve his mother uh, or her soul. So he's, he's like, I need to use the symbiote. The symbiote, as far as we know, because he gives the history of how the symbiote was found on Battleworld and how Reed Richards studied it and how Doom hacked into Reed's, you know, files and found out about the symbiote. And he's like, this thing, as far as we know, you're, that race of symbiotes has never died a natural death. They don't just die. Like they, you know, they find hosts that, you know, they, they can get killed or destroyed. But at least as far as we've discovered so far, they have they don't have natural deaths, which I don't think that's true. I mean, I know the movies did that where if they don't bond uh, in Earth's atmosphere, you know, and, and find a, a perfect host, they can die out. So and I think that was shown in the comics sometimes, too. But overall, I think at this point in the continuity, I think that's about right. Like where we don't really know if symbiotes just die on their own. So Doom has that theory that they don't. So he thinks they are immortal on some level. He wants that suit to go to hell and get his mother's soul back. Um, and he needs that crystal to do it. He needs the dark hole to do it. But he also needs to activate something in the symbiote to get it to play ball, I guess, and to to work and transcend through hell. So they need to use a page from the dark hole. They need to do all this stuff. So they send Eddie out with the symbiote to get a page from the dark hole and come back and you know do this experiment experiment that Doom has. But it doesn't go as, according to plan. But this is where I have a writing critique for David Michelini. Because I always say that David Michelini doesn't really write the symbiote and Eddie talking back and forth that much. He's done it a couple times here and there. But in this series, not so much. I mean, you have Eddie just saying things like this, like, I agree, we'll follow. So you can get a sense that he's talking to the symbiote. But you don't see the symbiote talking. There's not a back and forth like we see in a lot of other Venom comics with that. And this is why I have a problem with it. Because this scene here, the next page after this experiment goes wrong... Eddie's like, oh, I can't hear the symbiote in my head anymore. What did you do? And Dr. Goddard, who was kidnapped in the last issue, he's here and he's like, I think Doom took your, you know, took the creature's soul. He took the symbiote's 
soul away. And Eddie's like, I didn't know it had a soul. Like, I never even thought of that. And he goes, I just found out hell is real today. Like, he's like, I'm a man of faith, but I, I just found out hell is like definitively real because Doom wants to go there. So I love that they played with all that. But the problem is, is if you sit there and say, Eddie's like, I can't hear the symbiote anymore. Okay, but we haven't seen you talk with the symbiote where we, the reader, get that experience. We haven't seen that through the first Lethal Protector series that, you know, McElhinney did like two years ago or this one. Like, we haven't seen it happen either time. You know, we just see these moments where he says something and it's kind of inferred he's talking to the symbiote, but it's so few and far between, you know? So that's what drives me nuts. I'm like, if you would have had that where you had all these bubbles where, you know, Eddie's talking to the symbiote and they're trying to figure out how to talk to each other and communicate and everything... If you had that happening in the first two, three issues and then had him go, I can't hear anything. And then none of these pages had pop up balloons of what the symbiote was saying. That would have a better effect. So, yeah, I, I don't know. That's just my my editor and writing critique for Michelini on that one. I think that idea would have sold a lot better if you had them have, you know, dialogue on the page that you could see. And then you get to this stuff and the rest of the book, they don't talk to each other. It would have just made it more effective, in my opinion. Uh, but otherwise, you know, like that may, I think that's not even a nitpick. I think that's a, ma for me, that's a major criticism. Um, but the, luckily the art carries me through because <laughs> the art's so good. So, um, so you find out that, you know, Eddie's symbiote soul may have been taken now and it's not talking to him. And then Eddie gets betrayed again after he retrieves that dark hold page and gets locked up by Dr. Doom. And that's when we get the big reveal at the end is that Dr. Doom, he's got his crystal. He got the, you know, the symbiote uh, kind of mind wiped or whatever so it can't talk and then so that way he could now bond to it and become whatever this is dr doom venom <laughs> it's a cool drawing though i gotta say it's really cool looking uh but yeah so you know this is this is his big plan he's got this immortal creature now that can go into hell remember in the comics too the penance stare from ghost rider who is a hell creature you know it does not work on venom you know so that's neat that you know dr doom is piecing all this together and he's like i'm gonna take the symbiote and this this dark hold page magic and then also this crystal and combine everything together and i'm gonna go down there and i'm gonna get my mother you know it's it's a neat concept and like i said it's because it harkens back to one of my favorite dr doom stories i really i'm digging it uh, big time so uh so yeah i know i give away a little bit more on that issue than i did in previous issues but I'm just so excited. Like this to me was one of the better issues in the series as far as like with the, cause now doom's a bigger part of it. He's not just some guy sitting in a chair twirling his, you know, thumb or whatever. Um, this one is him actually being involved, but I just really hated about the dialogue bubbles with the symbiote. If you would have had more of it in the first three issues and in the beginning of this issue, when the symbiote voice went away, it would have had a better impact. I feel on readers than uh, than what this delivered but still really fun i'm liking the series and i can't wait to see how this all ends and how this is going to tie into current stuff because in venom issue 25 which will be coming out in like two months or something like that uh or three months maybe i think it's coming out later this summer but in that one dr doom is present day fighting venom in that issue so i think you know at some point editors were like kind of like the first lethal protector they were saying hey do something like this in a series so we can kind of pay tribute to it in current comics. It seems like they're doing that again where they're setting that up. But I also, this makes me feel a little bit better about Doom using a symbiote sliver and creating the Venom Bomb during uh, Bendis' run of Avengers because that book, you know, I was always like, wait, how did he get symbiote stuff? Like it doesn't, you know, where I don't understand. Like he, in the ultimate universe that Bendis was writing, Dr. Doom got his hand on symbiote stuff. But in this one, he, you know, in the main Marvel universe, he didn't. So it felt like Bendis was just recycling an idea from another universe and it made no sense well now having this story going back and having an interaction between them and dr doom that actually helps that story out a little bit so bendis you owe david michelini dinner or something <laughs> for for helping your story that felt like uh you know just nonsense feel like it makes a little bit more sense so um yeah so anyway that's my thoughts on this book if you have different thoughts or similar thoughts let it be known down below in the comment section and we'll keep talking as always down there. And we'll definitely discuss, review issue five when it comes out, possibly with massive spoilers or not. I don't know. Depends on how much I love the issue. This one I loved a lot, so I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Um, but I want you to go buy it. So if you haven't read this series yet, go buy it, make up your own mind, and then come back here and leave your thoughts in the comments so we can keep talking about it. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.